Hello and welcome to another episode of a Brother's Creed podcast. We talk about motivation, experiences, and we explore the world around us. We're the Thomas Brothers. I'm Ethan. And I'm Jared. And today we are going to just review our 2023 year. Uh, going to review some of the episodes that we've that kind of stick out in our mind. Also going to just talk about the year, talk about some uh, s- some news recaps from the year. I have a couple of uh, things from throughout the year that I wanted to bring up. It's been a wild year when you look back. And just going to just going to reminisce a little bit. So, it it should be fun. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Most valuable commodity I know of is information. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Either you're somebody or you're nobody. You're not the devil. You're practice. Well, that was the last time we'll play that intro. Yeah. It's a new new year, new intro. Yeah, we've already got one in the works. Uh, we'll reveal it next week, uh, and we're excited. It's it's good. It's got some good, great quotes, some great a great beat to it. Uh, good beat, easy dance to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great, great to get you hype for the podcast. But let's talk about twenty twenty three, man. It was a it was a crazy year. It's coming. Yeah, to an there end. was a lot that went on. Yeah, I mean any anything from. Like the war in Ukraine to the war in Israel to I don't know and, yeah I, I, every, I have everything else in between I guess oh yeah there's a lot I have a few things just a few highlights from a couple of these different months that I wanted to shout out one January the Chinese spy balloon remember that remember yep. it uh, I remember it. It went from like Alaska and went like down in through Montana, which is where they spotted it. And then it like went and circled around a bunch of the uh, nuclear bases uh, in the middle of the country. <laughs> and it was it was like sending back information the whole time. Uh, and then it flew right over my house in South Carolina. I looked out my window and I saw it. And I was like, hey, there's a spy balloon that our government's doing nothing about. Uh, and then they shot it off. They shot it down off the coast of Myrtle Beach. Oh, we'll, we'll shoot it down after it's done all his business. After it's transmitted. That was, that was the business. agreement that we had with the Chinese. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, side note, all of my things here are things that the government is absolutely lying to us about. <laughs> but major events. I think, we'll, I think we'll need a couple episodes for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we've covered a lot of these, actually. Uh, the next one is the Finn February was the East Palestine, Ohio derailment. We actually did an episode on that. Yep. That was nuts, oh man, with with all those chemicals and they just burned all this stuff up into the atmosphere and then they're like, Oh yeah, like just don't drink any water. Don't do anything, you know. It's it's, it's that well, was... we're gonna we're gonna change the definition of toxic for the certain chemical from like one parts per million that's that's deadly to like, oh uh however many parts per billion or whatever. It doesn't matter. Like the day before, yeah. 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 So that was all very shady. Uh, and there was so much going into that. You I mean we did a whole episode on that? Uh, the in June was the Titan sub that imploded. Uh, remember that? Oh, yeah, the Titanic. They were remember the, the they were like, oh, there's this big hunt on, and and we're we're trying to see if we could save them. They're at the bottom of the ocean somewhere, and and the Navy knew all along that that thing had imploded because they had heard the implosion underwater and they were just lying to us trying to cover up something in the news the whole time yep they're like oh yeah we heard that our like super advanced underground sensors picked that up you know two days ago when it happened (laughs) yeah but then they're like oh we hear tapping and we hear this and this and that and also go no they're just trying to hide something else yeah totally in july that was when they had that big ufo uh, congressional hearing where basically they had all these whistleblowers come out that said that uh, we have bodies, we have ships, we've got their technology. And I always actually listened to that David Koresh. I listened to him 
talk on Joe Rogan, and he was saying that Lockheed Martin has had some of that alien material for quite some time, and they were just reverse engineering it. Uh, it's funny, there's a guy on my team at work that he used to work for Lockheed Martin. I was like, dude, did you get to work on the uh, the top secret uh, space program? He's like, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey man, you can't say that stuff at work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh anyway, that's pretty cool. That was that was a that was a big step forward. Uh, but you know, it's hard to hard to know what what's true or what's what's fake there. I think that if the dov- government does some type of disclosure thing, it's likely not going to be the full truth. It's going to be kind of some watered down version of the truth that oh, manipulates sure. people into what they want the reaction to be. And then, and then they kind of play it off like, "Oh, we're just appeasing the masses, right?" This yeah. is a big joke, and they just play it off as a joke. And all the senators are like, "Why are we even spending time on this? This doesn't have anything to do with anything." But then they'll go freaking talk about some like stupid bridge in the middle of nowhere that doesn't have anything to do with anything. I bet you what they're gonna do with it is they're gonna make it a fear based thing, just like they did with COVID. If you can get people scared, they'll give up their rights so yeah. fast. And they're and they'll give up their money, so it's like, well, if uh, you know these aliens, if you could see what I saw uh, in these briefings, you'd be absolutely terrified. And they're like, oh, you my need gosh. to buy, you need to buy galactic life insurance. Oh yeah, uh, and uh, guess what? Hunter Biden's uh, the first one of its kind to sell <laughs> galactic life insurance. Yeah, he's it, the only person you can buy this through. Him and Nancy Pelosi's kids, uh, and Mitt Romney's kids. Uh, <laughs> oh, and 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 uh, and Chelsea Clinton too. Oh yeah, exactly. And so, it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be something. If, when they come out, they're gonna give us some kind of fear based thing to make us all scared. They want to give them more of our money. Well, we gotta build a, a galactic, you know, defense for Earth. You better give us all your money, and you better fall in line. We talked about Project Bluebeam before. That was a whole episode we did. So that was one major thing that happened this year. Another thing that happened this year in August was the Maui fires, you know. Oh yeah, the ones Blue. that uh, immediately thereafter they put a fence all around it. They didn't let anybody drive any drones over it. They didn't let anybody take pictures of it. Things were literally melted, uh, unless it was blue. Oh yeah, exactly. Oprah Winfrey's estate didn't get touched. Thank nope. goodness. Oprah, oh, she's queen. Uh, yeah, that was really shady, dude. They there was definitely direct energy weapons involved there, and that was a cover up. That they didn't. That wasn't there a bunch of Canada fires as well. Yeah, there was. I don't think that well? was. I don't think that was this year. I thought that was last year, but there were a lot, a lot of Canada fires. There were California fires the year prior, uh, in 2022, where they did similar stuff. To be like, and it was like all these fires started exactly at the same time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Actually. Maybe that was this year, because yeah, there was, was. A, a terrible haze. Uh, I remember that. And New York was like red. It was like yeah. uh, Total Recall, basically, or not Total. Re- uh, what was that? Blade Runner. It looked like Blade, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then in October, uh, the Israel Hamas war started, and there has been so much crazy news on this. I feel like there's been misinformation. Likely on both sides, uh, the, the news media just attaches themselves to anything they hear. You know, this hospital got blown up by Israel. Then they're like, oh, wait, no, it was actually Hamas rocket that got blown up. Uh, and so there's definitely lies coming from the Hamas side. But I can't necessarily sit here and say that I don't think there's lies coming from the Israel side either. Um, there's a lot of motivation. Uh, and it's not like I believe the media anyway. And so to say that, oh, yeah, now I just believe the media, everything the media says in regards to Israel, I just you know, don't buy it exactly. So it's yeah. kind of a tricky situation you're in. Yeah, crazy. And then, of course, there's the war in Ukraine, which has been ongoing. It started actually last year. I looked it up February of 2022, but it's been continuing going on and We've continued to see fake... Continu- continuously funded through 2023 oh. billions and billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, and we've continued to see fake footage coming out of Ukraine of people picking up, uh, you know, fake rubble with their hands and, you know, f- staged, uh, yeah, you know, uh, bombings and things like that. So it's a movie set. 
in some ways. And so I think there has some been some real stuff that come out, like some of the actual battles. I've seen some drone, crazy drone footage. That Man, they're using drones to attack like crazy. It's like, you remember that movie Olympus Has Fallen? Or I think it was, was it London Has Fallen? Or, or maybe? No, it was. Um, it was. Yeah, it was the one that the, they were on the boat and the drones yeah, came. Yeah, and the drones came and were like assassinating people. Like no, that, it was Angel. Angel Has Fallen. It was the third one. Yeah, yeah, it was the third one, definitely. I don't know what it was called. I, something. Or the Eagle Has Fallen or something like that? Cause it was about the no, president. I think it was Angel because uh, Gerard Butler was the angel. Was like, And the, it was like got blamed on him that he was trying to assassinate the uh, president. Not, not Chris Angel. No. <laughs> That's a different mind, mind freak. Yeah. yeah. No. So yeah, like that scene where they like they're on this boat and all of a sudden these drones just go, start going crazy and just like basically start smashing into people's heads. They're like little suicide drones. Uh, that is, I've seen a lot of footage and that that's exactly what the, a lot of these drones are doing in Ukraine war. So it's pretty crazy. This new age of technical warfare makes you think twice. Maybe they didn't have it right in the Terminators. Uh, there weren't going to be. T-1000s walking around smashing skulls with their feet. They're just going to be tiny little drones that just just go zip right into your head. Yeah, seriously. Things <laughs> that'll just come find you while you're sleeping, crawl in your brain and explode. Yeah. Crazy. So that's a recap of uh, the craziness that the 2023 has been. Um, anything else you want to add? Some good, there, was, there was some good stuff too. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> uh, inflation uh, inflation wasn't up as bad as it has been no, the, the, it's december and the stock market seems like it's kind of been turning around the past couple months but Maybe. uh hey did you hear that they un they now that they made student loans like people start pay, paying student loans again um there was like nine million people that didn't pay their student loans uh, yeah and an hour, we were, we were look, I was looking it up with Shannon. $37,000 is the average student loan debt in the United States. And the average payment is $500. Yeah. That's a lot of money, man, for someone who's maybe not. When, yep, in, in this inflationary environment, it's like crazy. Yep. Now the, the, the yeah, loan freeze is over. People are going to have to start paying that money back. Yeah, pay the piper. Oh, yeah. Or pay the gouger of the institutions. <laughs> also, pay another criminal. Uh, another I would say oh, a great thing that came out this year, um, on a positive note, is that the Supreme Court uh, had this. Uh, they ruled on a case against Duke Universe, uh, Chapel Hill University, and Harvard University that they can no longer use affirmative action in their recruiting practices. Now, yeah. Of course, those universities are likely going to go some other way to do that because, but the it sets a great precedent that you cannot discriminate based off of race, uh, for to let someone into school. And I'm hoping that that basically generally will evolve to the workplace as well because we see plenty of that in the workplace. Um, even though they say when they when you apply for a job, this will not be used mm, to for hiring purposes. It will simply be. Used just for our uh, you know, recruiting purposes, and it's like, ha! This our is own, our own internal metrics, so we can decide who to hire. What, not well, yeah, what people we need to hire more of. Yeah, so hopefully that will be kiboshed in twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four is gonna be a wild year, though. Yeah, you're not gonna be. You're not we gonna got the blue. president presidential election. Oh man, it's just this. It's gonna start the heating economy up. and how real estate is looking right now it's just weird if interest rates start going down then you know prices are just gonna skyrocket i i have no idea it's gonna be a crazy year yeah the election's gonna heat things up man so bad and you know how it is around election time everybody's like just so heated and it's gonna bring up i mean if trump's the nominee it's gonna bring up all this january 6th stuff which half the country thinks oh you know that was such an insurrection, and then the other half of the country thinks like, man, that was just a tour of the capital. You know, it's so divisive right now, yeah. and uh, it's going to come again. I was watching, it's going to all rear this. its head again in twenty twenty four. I think. Yeah, I was watching this thing, and they said the the only time because you know how like I think it was like Colorado and 
Delaware, and there's been a couple states that have said that they will remove Donald Trump's name from the presidential ballot in the primaries and in the general election. Oh, really? I think Colorado already did it. They made it had a yeah. Supreme Court ruling. And so, Colorado. and there's been a couple other states that said, "Oh, we're going to do that as well." But the I was watching this thing and said the last time that a president's name was removed from a ballot Civil was War. Abraham Lincoln. A- Abraham Lincoln. Yep. Some of the states refused to put his name on the ballot. And what did that lead to? Secession. Yeah. So. Man. Yeah. So, but despite all those crazy things, 2024 is going to be great for us personally because we're going to be making fat stacks. We're going to have great. Yeah, buddy. We're going to be better fathers. We're going to have more established personal creeds. And we're going to keep doing the podcast. It's going to be great. But uh, we're gonna dive into that next week's episode. So, um, but let's talk about uh, let's talk about some of our favorite episodes from twenty twenty three. You want to go first, Ethan? Yeah, yeah. So I uh, have one that's kind of um, a more somber example, uh, but it really hit me hard. And then I have another one that's kind of just a really just uplifting, like just a happy, um, motivational type. Uh, type story so the first one is from episode i think it was episode 124 um and this was our episode called reprogramming the brain with men's coach russell creed you remember this episode i do yeah so uh are you sure that was 124 yeah i I don't think that was 124 Yep, 124. Well, maybe I got my, because I was, I thought 124 was like the uh, brothers. Maybe that's 125. Yeah. Famous Brothers is 125. Okay, yeah. Um. So, I, I really liked this one because it was, it just was very real. Um, Russell had gone through a lot. And had suffered, had been very financially successful, um, but then had a major uh, health issue that I think he ended up having to have a a liver transplant. And there was just, things were bad for him personally. And so we talk about kind of men's mental health. We talk about um, just, it's, it's an excellent episode on kind of overcoming your own personal struggles. Um, And so he actually shares a very, very personal and somber story in the the clip that we're going to play. And then kind of says a couple things after it. So that that was a crazy episode. Uh, I was kind of like taken aback by how impactful that was and how he was just like, yeah, man, it's, and how low he got, uh, even though yeah, uh, he was for sure in a tough spot there. So let me see. I'm just pulling this up. And one thing that uh, that kind of led into a question. Um, I ac- actually asked him a question beforehand, leading into this, because I had uh, uh, more of a not not a personal relationship, but an acquaintance relationship with someone who had um, taken his life uh, just because of depression and, and, and it was kind of living two different lives. Uh, and so I, I, I kind of shared that experience with him and this is what his response to that was. All right, let's play it. It's quote, quote one, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was very much there and I do remember a day when I locked myself in the bedroom and I had a gun in my hands and was very much considering walking that path. What kept me from it that day um, was knowing that I would leave a young boy behind without a father. This was after my transplant. This was, our youngest was probably five at the time. And I grew up without a father. My father left when I was three. I know the pain of not having a father figure around, not having a father to be there. 
And I didn't want that for my son. That's what stopped me. Yeah. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah. Um, but you're right. This is, this is, there's an epidemic of this and the largest um, cause of death for men under 50 in our nation is suicide. Um, and it's a tragedy. And you're right that when men get disconnected from their purpose, when they are no longer feel like they're in control of their lives, um, when they're living and doing all the things that they think they're supposed to be doing, and it comes up empty, it's easy to fall into despair. It's easy to get to that place where it feels like it's no longer worth it. I get it. I understand it. I've been there. Um, and so I mean, if there's anyone listening to this that's there right now, all I, I can tell you is that it gets better. You, it, it can get better, right? You just, you've got to hang in there and start doing some things to make a change and take control of your life and recognize that you have the power to create a life you want. But it takes time and it's not easy. It's not easy at all. So that one for me, it, it just hit me really hard. I mean, I've personally never struggled with, I guess, suicidal thoughts or or, or, or that that deep of a situation. Uh, but I think everybody has has. I know everyone has their own struggles, right? And 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 we don't always understand how other people react or feel about their own struggles. Um, you know, it's easy for us sometimes to look at someone else and say, look at someone else's life and say, Oh, they have everything or what, what could they be struggling with? But you know, who are we to judge? And so I just really like what he said there at, at the end when he was like, whenever men kind of lose this, their sense of purpose and they just do what they think they should be doing and they kind of just uh, get lost in life, um, that it's easy for them to fall into a state of just kind of despair, which uh, is a dangerous place to be, for sure. A dangerous place for that person mentally, but also just for those around us. And so for me, that was just something that, man, when I was thinking back, I was like, what? what? I was just flip, flipping through all of the, the the episodes, and I was like, man, I remember specifically talking about this. Um, and it just, just hit me that this this is really why we have the podcast, to you know, get people together and to build a, a, a brotherhood and a, 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 or a, you know, there's, there's women that listen to the podcast too, but a group of people that are like-minded and that, you know, want to just get better, want to be better, want to feel better, want to, uh, you know, just, just be all around healthier in, in all aspects. Uh, and, yeah. and that health kind of ebbs and flows sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's better, it's better than others. But that was just one that hit me, hit me kind of hard. No, I, I like that one. He was talking about being on like almost autopilot, where you're just doing stuff, you're going through the motions. And then he talks about how he lost track of his purpose. Uh, and one thing I, I sticks in my mind about that episode is that he said that he was working. I think he does like <clears throat> works for an insurance company, doing like. Like, uh, what do they call the work? Um, where you're forecasting people's deaths, uh, or, or like you're forecasting death rates and stuff like that. Um, it'll come to me. But uh, we, I work with a couple actuary, actuarial work. He is actuarial, yeah. Yeah, and he said that like he's doing the same thing now, but like he finds so much more meaning into it because he has found his purpose, and his purpose is to like uplift those around him. So that's just that's what he does. Is he? focuses on that and he finds a lot more meaning in the thing, everything in the things of life that he does even though he's doing a lot of the same stuff so I thought that was a really powerful episode and again that was episode 124 so uh, one of mine that I liked is our famous brothers episode obviously uh, Ethan and I are brothers and I love this episode because we looked at two brothers in history I talked about the Montgolfier brothers who were pioneers in the aerospace, uh, not aerospace, but uh, like the 
hot air balloon air, air yeah aer- aeronautical maybe aeronautical yeah uh and they were pioneers in hot air balloons and they made big deal and they impressed lots of people uh it was during a balloon mania they kind of started this balloon mania in, in france at the time and so really cool episode and then ethan you talked about frank and jesse james and so i wanted to share a uh, pull up a piece of that episode here and Kind of talk. Hello through. and welcome to another episode oh, of a Brothers Creed podcast. Let's see. We talk about that's the beginning. Uh, let me just skip to the thing here. Uh, this is at the twelve minute and let's see, actually twenty one minute mark is where you start telling the story uh, about kind of the last hurrah for the one of these last uh, big job for Jack, uh, Frank and Jesse James. So I wanted to. Uh, play this and, and just uh we can talk about it here we go does with their toe, nobody's gonna die hands up one of the infamous bank robberies by frank and jesse james was known as the great northfield minnesota raid the two brothers along with several other outlaws attempted to rob a bank in the town of northfield but the plan quickly went awry The townspeople fought back, and the James brothers found themselves on the run with a posse hot on their tails. Despite being outnumbered, the two brothers stuck together, relying on each other for protection and support. The pursuit continued for several days, with Frank and Jesse managing to stay one step ahead of the posse. Eventually they were cornered and forced to face their pursuers in a final showdown. Frank was shot and injured, and Jesse carried him to safety. Remembering the words his older brother had said to him all those years ago. You're okay. I've got you. Well, that was that was just that one little clip uh, about how these guys had the last battle, and then I love how uh, your son uh, voiced that uh, throwback to one of the stories you had told previously in the episode about when uh, Jesse James Jesse had saved yeah, Frank. He'd fall, fallen, he'd fallen in the river. Jesse had fallen in the river, uh-huh. and Frank, when he was a little kid. And Frank had uh, jumped in the river after him and saved his life. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So that was a good story, and I love that, uh, the way you tied that in. And obviously the production, man, that was a battle going on with that, with that audio. <laughs> <laughs> but that was one of my favorite episodes. It, it was just so good. It was totally well, and sound effects were great. I love that you, you were able to incorporate Nixon in, or your son into one of these episodes, so. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, for sure. I always love those episodes that we do, and, and I like it. Um, well, we kind of incorporated it into kind of our lives too, you know, like brothers and and family and and uh, everything else. And that that uh, transitions into my next one. The next one that that, that I really liked was episode one forty one which is a uh, Father's Day special. And uh, that was about father and son duos in history. And so this one is about the father and son duo that actually they would, the the father, um, the, well, the son rather, had cerebral palsy and was unable to uh, talk. He was unable to to move. He was he was wheelchair bound. He uh, was was kind of mentally there, right? But um, wasn't able to do anything for himself. And his son wanted to do a a race. And so his dad was like, "Okay, all right." And then they ended up having this whole kind of legacy of father and son doing these really hard things together, uh, moving forward. And so it was just kind of. This is kind of an inspirational story to me. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and play it, and then I'll I'll talk about it a little bit after. So 
story of Dick Hoyt and Rick Hoyt. So they were known as Team Hoyt. Rick Hoyt, the son, was actually born with cerebral palsy, uh, which left him unable to speak or walk. But kind of despite these challenges in his son's life, Dick, the father, uh, he was determined to include Rick, his son, in kind of all aspects of life. And Rick could communicate. Um, he just was kind of, he, he didn't speak like in sentences and stuff. Uh, and this journey began in 1977 when Rick, the son, uh, kind of expressed a desire to participate in a local charity race that they had, like a foot race. Um, and it was, I don't know if it was like a 5K or something like that, which is like three miles. Dick, the father, didn't really have any experience with running, but he said, well, what the heck, let's do it. Right, And so he ended up pushing his son, Rick, in the wheelchair for the entire race. And really this kind of ignited like a passion in both of them to start to compete in different races. And they really kind of built up and actually ended up doing multiple marathons, triathlons, and even an Ironman wow. together. Yeah. And so obviously... uh Rick, the son, who's in a wheelchair, you know, wheelchair bound, and he doesn't physically can't support himself. That put a lot of pressure on on the dad, on the father. And so, uh, Dick, the father, he would swim, bike, and run, all while pushing Rick in a specially designed wheelchair and pulling him in a boat during the swimming portions of the these races that he was doing. And so, I mean, he would just strap him to his, you know, strap him on a cord and pull him behind in a boat as he was swimming, you yeah. know, miles, miles and miles. They faced physical and emotional challenges, obviously. I'm sure that was extremely difficult. But their bond and determination and their excitement for what they were doing really kind of um, propelled them forward. Yeah. So that was one for me that I really liked. I just love that story for a couple different reasons, but his son expressed a desire to do something. And even though the dad had never done that thing before, he was like, okay, let's give it a try. Let's do it. And it it, it kind of became their legacy a little bit. It was something that they loved doing together. And so... Yeah. Just for me, it was like, man, are there other things that, that I can do with my kids or things that my kids express to me, even like very small things. Like one of my sons today was like, hey, dad, can we go build Legos or with can we go build Legos together after lunch? And I was busy doing some stuff and, and I was just like, well, but I, I, I'm working on some things or whatever else. He was just like, oh, OK, you know, and then I was thinking about it and I was working on my stuff and I was like man, I can spare 10 minutes. And so you know, I went upstairs and I was just like, okay, we're going to have a, uh, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and we're going to have a, a, see who can build the best. Um, and then I said, what do you, what do you want to build? And he goes, how about s snow vehicles? And I was like, okay. And <laughs> nice. so I was like, all right, we're going to take 10 minutes and we're going to build the best snow vehicles that we can. And and then we just, we did that. And then he loved it and everything. So it's just like, don't, don't uh, lose the moment. Yeah, the small ones and the big ones. Yeah, totally. Well, this next one is from uh, episode 156 for me, and it was about open-mindedness. And actually, I was going to read all those items that I went through earlier that happened this year uh, where the governments you know, or other people are trying to like tell us one thing and then the reality is a different thing. And so... I felt like this episode was really pertinent uh, to 2023 for me. And so let me pull it up here. Episode 156 here. And it's at the 12 minute mark where I talk about uh, a specific uh, one of the downsides, I guess, of open mindedness. But it's uh, pretty interesting here. Let's see. It is. Uh, here we go. So I want to talk about that a little bit. And I think that this is really interesting. So there's a guy that uh, wrote a book 
called Combating Cult Mind Control. His name was Steve Hansen. And he was someone who directly had, like, he was like, kind of in a, in a cult. Uh, and this was in the 1980s, 1988. It was a published date for this. And then it was re-edited in 2018. But uh, it's interesting because we saw a lot of this with COVID, where um, there was this cult mind control around, don't listen to any fake news, and you better listen to what the, the mainstream narrative is. And there was like this shutting down, this this close, the, the, the government and the news media was trying to get you to be very close-minded. And I, and I think that's interesting uh, if you think about it. in that sense or in any other sense. Uh, one of the things that he talks about is he, he talks about this bite model. So he says there's four components of the model. Bite. Behavior is the first one. Information, thought, and emotion. He says according to his bite model, if a destructive cult can effectively control one or more components, the others will tend to follow. For instance, restricting information can lead to control of thoughts, which can in turn lead to change in controlled behaviors and emotions. His bite model is uh, based off of this Leon Festlinger's cognitive dis- dissonance theory. So uh, I think that was just so interesting how the control of information is one of these key manipulative tactics to make your behavior fall in line, which you know, it's kind of all those things I had, we had gone through before, uh, and, and also my prediction for how, how they're going to go about with the UFO thing is they're going to uh, control the information and they're going to present it in a way that will will guide your, your behavior, which would they, which I think that they are hoping is fear. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It just seems like we face constant manipulation from everything, mm-hmm. whether it's like advertising or we I was in the mall the other day with my kids getting Christmas presents and my son walked by one of those little like claw vending machines and oh looked, yeah then he was like he's like oh dad there's a switch in there there's a switch in there and I was like okay and he was like can we have a dollar so we can try to get so we can get the switch and I was like I was like bud I was like I don't even know I I I, I said no because so I said, that's just a waste of money. And he was like, what do you mean? We could pay a dollar and we could get that switch. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, I kind of went through it. I was like, man, they're just, it's a trick. I said, you know what, son? I wouldn't even doubt if that box was empty. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, if you have 300 people, I said, how much does a switch cost? And he was like, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. I was like, yeah, you know, two, three hundred bucks. And I said, let's say you have, um, you know, 300 people pass by here and and put a dollar in this machine every year. And and he was like, I was like, how much money is that? He's like, well, $300. I said, okay, well, what if they leave that machine and that switch in that machine for, for three years? He's like, oh, well, that's, you know, $900. And I was like, yeah. So that that's why it has all this dust on it. That's why it's <laughs> in there. That's why, you know, it's like, because everybody puts their money in there hoping that they're going to get this. He's like, but there's an Apple Watch in there too. And there's a, you know, all this <laughs> sort of stuff. I was like, dude, I said, it's pr- the machine is rigged for you not to win. Yeah. It is just a waste of money. Um, and, and it's just like so, it's just advertising. Everything's marketing. Everything's trying to get you to do something. Yeah. It, yeah. And so, did you know that on those machines, like there's a clog, like pickup strength. You can set the yeah. pickup strength, and then when it rises and it hits the top, there's a hold strength that you can also set. So if you you can set a strong pickup strength, and then when it gets to the top and it starts moving, you can, it will weaken its grip based off of the strength that you want it to hold. So then it's like, let's go, and you're like, oh, man, I almost got it, you know? Yeah. Oh, put another dollar in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Well, uh, th- those were the ones that we had, and uh, you didn't have any more, did you? No, um, I mean just a couple call outs. We we did, we did movie reviews. This oh yeah, year. what was the favorite? We uh, did with the movies. I, I, we didn't go ahead. I, I like one of favorite. I like I like that Sisu movie. That was good. Yeah, 
Sisu was good. And I mean, the new Creed movie came out in 2023. Yeah, like, we read that one good. John Wick yeah, was Mar- mixed results for me, at least. John, yeah, John Wick was 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 all right. Uh, Mario Brothers came out. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff. We we kind of mixed things up with the podcast a little bit. We ended up doing probably for the last several months. We've done uh, like inspirational. We call them Creed Credos. You know, cr- specific Creed videos where uh, or, or, or podcast where we t- pick a specific credo or, or virtue or aspect of, of uh, someone's personal creed and dive into it a little bit, tell some stories, talk about it. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm excited for 2024 and, and the things that are going to come out, conversations we're going to have, stories we're going to tell. It's going to be good. Yeah. Well, thanks all for reminiscing with us and for uh, reviewing this year and Hopefully you can go back and check out some of those episodes. And a lot of th- those were just two. We each just ch- said we were just going to choose two, but a lot of them were were excellent episodes. Uh, so let us know which ones your your favorite. Uh, reach out to us on Instagram or or TikTok or wherever, or leave a comment. That'd be great too. And thank you so much for listening and 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 sharing this journey with us. And like we always say, let's build that career together. All right, let's do it. <laughs>